Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Today we're going to play with a WaveTech 20 MHz synthesized arbitrary function generator model 95. I believe this unit is from about 1990. It came in completely defect. One of my buddies found uh, this in a container uh, a few days ago, and we spent a few days uh, playing around with this. Uh, so thank you very much, Nikolai, for uh, finding this and bringing it, and also playing together with me to uh, repair it. We found a lot of errors and bugs, and we fixed all of that. And we actually thought that we kind of repaired it. I've been uh, playing with it then and uh, after that, and <laughs> I'm so sorry. I keep finding all sorts of stuff that we didn't repair completely, so um, let's walk uh, through some of the problems that I found so far. So as you can see right now, we got some, um, we got two signals here. This is the synchronization output that you can easily trigger on, and we got side wave output. And um, I can now click offset. See, this is a 3 volt offset and it is centered. And then you hit the knob and then you can go around here to the decimal point, for example, and then you can dial up and down. Let's try and see what happens. See, go down like that or go up like that. So it seems like you can adjust the offset. But if I continue like this, then it goes, oops, back again. And then, oops, you see, we got some wrap around problems. And it's also acting a little bit weird here. See, now we have 0, 0.0. And I got quite a lot of negative on the output. And it's not looking so nice anymore and now it looks nice so there is definitely some wrap around analog circuits that is not working completely good in the offset system and um, yeah what else is not working so that will be the different output functions you can change the function here and that will be the square wave output and in square wave output, I got no output. And that's because square waves, they are made very, very different from any other uh, sine wave or, or um, a, a triangle, of course, or what I was trying to say. Triangle is not working. Square wave is working. And the triangle is made very, very different. So let's go to the... Square wave is working, but it's not looking super beautiful. And that has something to do with high frequency compensations that's not um, uh, correctly uh, adjusted. So probably somebody's been f poking around in this unit uh, with some of these things. Uh, other than that, I think the rest seems to be working. There is a, a built-in calibration and uh, the calibration and cell check procedure that is inside this unit, uh, this is actually what I wanted to run now. And to be able to run this, you have to remove all the connections. And I haven't not been doing this, so you're probably going to see it fail. And uh, you do that, you activate the calibration and self-test by hitting shift and then this calibrate. And now it will calibrate and check for all the different errors. And this is probably going to take quite a lot of minutes. And then it's going to list um, all the problems that it find. I of course expect it to find um, all the triangle uh, problems and then it will list all the numbers. And then we can go through the service manual and hopefully figure out what is uh, the problem? What kind of a lock is that? After run, running all this uh, calibration kind of stuff, 
uh, it is really back to working order. It did say something about the sign amplifier error, and that has probably something to do with my offsets. So that is something I want to play around with. But look what happened. This is sine wave, and my offset is now very close to nothing. And of course, it is still a little bit positive here. And still, if I play around with my offsets, you see, oops, then it goes weirdo, weirdo looking, and then I crank it down a little bit. I can whoop, click, and I can hear we got some clickety click. Click. So every time these clicks go, when I play around with the DC offset, that affects the output. And that definitely got to tell me something about what is going on here. I just need to look at the block diagrams a little bit deeper and understand uh, uh, exactly what is going on here. But look at that. This is my sine wave output. And if I click function here, my triangle output is working. What kind of luck is that? So that was only because of calibration. Amazing. And then my square wave is also working and looking better than ever before, I think. There's probably a little bit of frequency adjustments and stuff like that. But yeah, it is uh, working better than ever before. Ah, <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, I, of course, I need to open it now, and uh, I will show you all the nice details inside. Uh, there's another little funny thing I want to show you before I I open it. There is a reason for it to be standing here on pieces of paper, and it's because the rubber feet, they are... They, are dissolved and turned into uh, chewing gum or some gross dissolved uh, I don't know what I would call this and it's just splatting out all over my table and it's super terrible you can even see how it sticks to paper here and it's uh, nasty nasty so I don't know how can I really fix this maybe i should just put in some gaffer tape or something around the so far because this is not nice this unit uh, uses about 80 watts of power and there is a fan in here when this unit came to us um there was a much much more powerful and even defective fan so this one sounded like a helicopter we changed the fan to a very, very silent one, and it's not moving that much air through the cabinet. The reason um, for this is this only 80 watts, and uh, I really don't think we need to have a helicopter blowing around in here. Um, th this uh, case here is, and the whole design here is a very, very good optimized for a, a thermal design. You see some screws here on the top, and screws here on the top. So this is actually where the output amplifier is located. And that will be a heat sink connecting directly to the top plate for good heat transfer. You can even feel it is nice and warm right here. And that is because this entire aluminum profile is um, touching here and transferring heat to the top. And yeah, it's nice and cold here. And here it's like ice cold. And that is, of course, where it sucks in air and it goes through the profile here and it goes out the holes here. On the rear side, we again see the good thermal design. All the power supply regulators, they are mounted on the motherboard and connected directly to the aluminium profile here. That's big and thick and, uh, and good thermal Conducting, that was of course the main transformer, and yes, the interface, the IEEE interface, and that is needed to upload um, the arbitrary uh, waveforms into the four uh, waveform memories. So I just pulled off the top cover. You see, maybe you remember the four screws in the top cover, and then there's the even another inner shield here. I don't actually understand why that is necessary. 
when the top cover is down here touching everything here like that why exactly is this uh, needed maybe if you notice this little burn mark right here i will come back to that uh, in a few minutes you also see some burn marks here this is the output amplifier and this is what we repaired the last few days we played around with the output amplifier and um, I think that one is uh, working quite uh, good right now and um, that will be the four plug-in modules for arbitrary um, waveform uh, memories and all that I should probably show you the different cards oh yeah you need to pull out this Come on, baby. Here you go. And there is also, I think this is a battery or something like that here. Because it says uh, something about a battery and then uh, the name of it is called a keeper. And it also says something about lithium. So I think here we also got some uh, memory backup stuff like that and I can see we've got a lot of static memory and stuff like that here on the arbitrary here is the function generator board this is number two from the back and that one is uh, where we got our two main DA converters uh, right here and uh, Yes, it's 8-bit, uh, by the way. And then we got a lot of uh, op-amps, uh, relays, and uh, different transistor switching systems that's uh, uh, generating the different filters and the different currents uh, for triangle, square wave, uh, filters, compensations, uh, and all those kinds of things. Um, yeah, that's actually where all that uh, stuff is, uh, is done. And this one, of course, works perfectly fine. We've got some nice test points here, so uh, it's easy to uh, to see the signals coming out of that uh, module. Uh, by the way, um, the offset, the DC offset, or in DC mode, the DC voltage output is not generated on this board. This is only the waveform signals, the offset voltage, and even all the calibration um, DC voltages that is used uh, throughout this uh, unit, they come from this PCM56. Uh, this is a 16-bit serial input um, a DA converter. And that one goes to this multiplexer on the left and uh, so, so, so that means this system here can generate eight uh, I believe eight DC voltages including the offset and all the other uh, voltages they are of course filtered and controlling different offsets and different behaviors of different systems um, in this unit that is a DC controlled via the calibration data so this is the third circuit board from the back this is called the phase lock loop and this one is um, yes yeah of course doing the phase lock loop but it's also doing sine uh, conversion triangle and uh, square waves and it's um, doing am modulation and uh, different uh, loop lock filters and such and I guess that all that works, so I'm not going to play too much around in this side, this unit. Most of all the nice locking stuff is just inside this shielded box here, and it's soldered in. So yeah, I'm not going to go and play around with that one too much. So the last module is the output power amplifier 
and uh, it's also doing um, uh, some selection about the different sources it's uh, also doing we got three different output amplifiers here so it's handling both the unbalanced output and the two outputs that's balanced that's uh, two other amplifiers that is running in plus minus mode and then of course the most powerful unbalanced that can go down to 50 ohms and all that kind of stuff so all that is here and this is uh, where the, all the problems were originally i don't know you remember the big nasty burn mark i showed you guys uh, on the top of this aluminium plate i didn't make a lot of video or anything uh, on our repairs on this board and i'm so sad that i didn't do that but i got some pictures i can show you uh, about uh, the burn damage of this tantalium capacitor so i'll put in a few pictures um, of that uh, capacitor uh, right here so you should be able to, uh, to <laughs> at least uh, laugh or cry together with me that was really really bad so of course um, this capacitor has been burning quite a lot and let me show you the burn damage it created I don't know if you can see this entire PCB here the the flames fumes and all bad stuff here completely damaged this entire area of the circuit board and we had to change all these capacitors and tantalium capacitors on this board to get it up and running again um, not only the super burnt capacitor uh, tantalium was uh, of course not working but we had a few other tantalium capac capacitors that was also broken here and uh, that has been uh, fixed and uh, now I believe this board is more or less uh, working we have a little bit of uh, DC adjustment balancing uh, problems but I think that has something to do with the way that amplification or you know the the signal level is adjusted and they're using a very very cool uh, part that is um, mixing two signals together the wanted signal and a dc signal that adjusts that signal i should probably uh, show you guys some schematics from this uh, output amplifier where this um this uh multiplier chip is uh, used as an variable attenuator and it's of course a sick balanced signals it's going through all those transistors right here that is the output power drive and then we got a power up amp and then it goes to the output amplifiers and all those capacitors in this systems they were also shorted and uh, yeah, that's just the amazing design of this uh, output amplifier board. But of course, it's supposed to work from DC to 20 megahertz. And and really check out the thermal design as well here, right? What do you think about this? All the transistors of the big powerful ones. You can see there's a very good thermal connection to this aluminium plate of course it's very thin and all that but this will give you a really good cooling and you can of course imagine there's a tiny bit of air going around inside this case that will transport heat away but i think it is just this is a very good example of good thermal design but of course this thing is also 30 years uh, old right uh, so of course all those many many hours of running really really warm here maybe that was what killed all the tantalium capacitors nothing lasts forever I also need to show you the power supply this entire power supply here is of course a transformer rectifiers linear regulators 
and all that classic stuff so it's super easy to repair and to debug measure around here what is going on and all that and then we have the brain is that one a 6803 uh, it's a CPU with IO so it's almost a microcontroller but with external memory so we got RAM and EEPROM and here is of course our battery back up this IC here is almost like a port expander but it's also doing a lot of all the high speed um, uh, clock and uh, data around the special arbitrary and to move data back and forward fast because this CPU here is a very very slow CPU but it can set up this support IC to do all the fast and nasty stuff and this is not an intelligent chip or anything like that it's not programmable but it's just a support chip that can be set up by the software from this uh, microcontroller here that's super slow and stuff this, this is only running four megahertz and uh, like you see here all the ICs there are from uh, 90 so I believe that is my age of this unit oh, there's another funny thing that I see here as well Look at those fuse holders. So that is, they're, they're used to grip the aluminum plates. Both the in-between plates here, you can just pull these up. And also the shielding plate for the output power board. So that is a good way to create a good contact and good uh, shielding between the different uh, circuit boards. So we don't have any crosstalk or noise or anything like that. So that's uh, really well done, I think so. A little bit of relays. That's probably some of the relays I hear go clickety-click when I uh, my output goes up and down and such. And I think I will play a little bit with that and hopefully fix the output problem. And here is the output board again. I just removed the aluminium shield and that is also the cooling for all the transistors as you can see here that be all the top parts of the TO39 packages and this is what they like to use and it's actually a really good package for high speed and quite compact and yeah for, for this power range that we have here it's uh, absolutely optimal and uh, yes, uh, as I said uh, earlier in the in the video, this one is the variable uh, attenuation. There you go. That is a very interesting coupling. I should uh, maybe put in a little snip from the schematic so you can see what it's doing. And this is. Uh, the trimmer up here is uh, R25, that is for DC balance uh, for this uh, attenuator chip. And then the output from that one is amplified using this set of transistors. And then it goes to this high speed op amp. And this one is a very, very special op amp, as you can see here. The CLC404 is running hundreds of megahertz of speed, uh, but it's only specified for plus minus five volts, and uh, absolute maximum is plus minus seven volts. And uh, we got plus minus 12 volt supply here. So what they're doing is they have two diodes in series with the positive supply, and that will be the ones you see here in the top. And then they have a negative system using the diode, Sina diode, and that transistor here. And uh, that transistor is not working anymore. It was not. And that is why I had too low negative voltage on this op amp. And that made it clip and distort the output sine wave when uh, I was at different uh, DC offsets and different output uh, levels. So the way that it uh, 
this system actually generates a very, very wide range of um, super accurate controllable uh, amplitude signals. It's using, of course, this analog controllable attenuator, and then it's uh, using relays, a mechanical attenuator. So all these things in combination also affect the DC uh, ranges in some steps and uh, of course the amplitudes and stuff. So that means the, the output level here is um, always in a range of uh, 1 to 10 or something like that. And then it jumps and jumps and jumps in the mechanical attenuator. So that's a really, really smart way to do it, to get a good um, signal to noise ratio uh, throughout the system. And um, yes, I'm now going to change this uh, transistors and uh, I hope it's going to work. Uh, I didn't have a brand new transistor exactly the same type, but I found one of my old thrown out boards, uh, one that is exactly the right type. And uh, it's a little bit shorter pin, uh, pins here and it needs to be soldered when it is screwed in and this way I will get the right length. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with that. So I'm super happy about my sine wave output is now nice and beautiful no matter <laughs> no matter what output power I got. I still got this uh, offset jump and that's just because I didn't uh, run the calibration after that. And um, yeah, I also realized why I had and didn't have a, um, the triangle output. Look at that. See, it's gone. It's something to do with the um, relays. Because if I just swap around here, oh yeah, see? The square wave output is beautiful. The bottom one, that is the synchronization output. And uh, if I just click around here, sine wave. And then see triangle and sometimes i go to triangle then it goes flippity floppity flippity and then shoop, nice and stable or then just goes gone so yes all i had to do is poke a little bit more around with the functions here there is a, a little bit of an annoying lag every time you hit the function then you have to wait a little bit you can't just go tick -tick 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 -tick. see there's a half a second lag. So that is, uh, it just ignores my impatient way to work. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Come again tomorrow. Bye bye.